Welcome back everybody to an Invasive Brews Quick Facts episode and today I'm going to be tackling Asian Carp. And while we go over some quick facts on Asian Carp, I'm going to be enjoying one of my favorite beers of all time. All the way from Missoula, Montana is a brown ale from Big Sky Brewing Company. It is the Moose Drool. This is one of my all time favorite beers. Some of my family members went up to Buffalo, Wyoming and they found it and they brought it back for me. So. That's what I'm going to be doing, so let's jump in to Asian Carp. Asian Carp is an umbrella term. It covers four different species of carp that are native to Asia. You have the grass carp, the black carp, the big head carp, and the silver carp, which are the ones you see in the funny YouTube videos and on the news jumping out of the river into people's boats. Now all of these fish are in the Cyprinidae family of fishes. This constitutes about 3,300 different species of minnows and carps around the world. The more widespread common carp, however, is not from Asia, but in fact from Europe. And more on them in a different video. These fish actually have a variety of diets. They all don't consume the same thing which their diet was part of their introduction here in North America. Now grass carp are vegetarians. They eat aquatic weeds, aquatic plants, and in the 60s that's why they were brought over. They were brought over to mitigate our use of chemical herbicides in fighting aquatic weeds. Black carp are molluscivores, which means that they eat mollusks, such as snails and mussels. Bighead and silver carp eat plankton and zooplankton and even detritus which led to their introduction to Queen aquaculture and sewage lagoons in the 1970s. Due to their voracious appetites, their quick growth rates, and their fecundity, these fish have become a huge issue here in North America. They can quickly outcompete our native species, especially bighead and silver carp. Plankton is the staple of all aquatic food webs, and these fish are consuming innumerable amounts of plankton out of the ecosystem, and that can drastically change the functions of the ecosystem and its dynamics. Grass carp can eat a lot of vegetation out of an ecosystem, reducing habitat for fish fry, uh, native species, they compete with our native species, and they lower the oxygen levels of that aquatic ecosystem. Black carp were accidentally introduced here in North America in shipments of grass carp. And since they eat mollusks, like snails and mussels, that puts them in direct competition with quite a few of our native species of fish, like the freshwater drum and the threatened lake sturgeon. These fish are spreading at an alarming rate, and in some areas, especially with the silver and bighead carp, 90% of the biomass in certain systems is all carp. There are even documented areas where the plankton populations are so low that the carp can't even sustain themselves, thus making it an ecological dead end. Each one of these species reaches maturity at different ages, each black carp reaching maturity from four to six years, but each female is capable of laying 100,000 to a million eggs per year. You can still buy grass carp for your local ponds and recreation areas. They are triploid grass carp, which means they're sterile. But fertile grass carp out in the wild can still lay upwards of 500,000 eggs per year. The big head and the silver carp, they're the ones that are spreading like wildfire throughout the continent very rapidly. Big head carp females reach maturity at three years old and the males are reaching maturity at around two years old. And here in North America, a female has been found from anywhere from 4,000 to 1.6 million eggs. And these eggs then float down the river and then 40 to 60 hours later they hatch into little carp fry. Silver carp in their native range reach maturity at 4 to 8 years. But here in North America they're reaching maturity at 2 That's years. And each female is capable of having up to 5 million eggs a year. Both state and federal agencies are working diligently at slowing down and containing the spread of these species. They're doing electrofishing surveys, they net surveys, they contract commercial fishermen as well as give subsidies to commercial fishermen. So they are working very hard, but there are things that me and you can do as just regular old citizens. For one, you can catch them on hook and line. You can go fishing for them. And that being said, 
They make great catfish bait. A big silver carp can make a lot of cut bait. So next time you catch a carp on the line, don't just throw them back or throw them on the bank. Use them. They are a source of protein, so there are products that you can go out and buy. And one of those being dog treats. Murdoch loves these. They're made out of silver carp, sweet potato, and cranberries. So they are very healthy for my dog. That being said, they are a great source of protein for us humans as human consumption. In fact, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources just changed the name from Asian carp to kopi, which is a nod to their copious amounts of fish out there. This is a way to make them more appealing on a menu. Now I have eaten them and I've tried every species of them and they are good. They're just a pain in the butt to clean since they have a lot of Y bones. But once you get past those, you can get a lot of meat from one big carp. They are also a very good source of nitrogen and other fertilizers for the garden. So if you have a garden, you can bury them in the garden and put your tomato plants or pepper plants right over the top of them. And you can use them as free fertilizer, free or abundant fertilizer. Those are just a couple of the things that I have done with the Asian carp that I have caught. Um, if you've done any other things with uh, invasive species that you've caught, please put a comment down below. I would love to hear them. Those are just some quick facts about Asian carp, or kopi, I should say, now that they changed the name. Um, if you would like to learn more about the silver carp, I do have a video up about when I went to Kentucky Lake to help the commercial fishermen and help them with a, a full day's work. We caught 5,280 pounds of silver, and, uh, silver carp in one day. Um, so go ahead and check that video out. I really hope you learned something today. If you have, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, drink local and plant native.